What's up? It's me, the OG GM, and here I am, dancing around some adventures. You know why I'm dancing around some adventures? Because it's time for another list from CBR. Yo, we haven't done a CBR list in a bit, but we just stumbled across a new one. Now, let's paraphrase this. This is a follow-up to a list we did before from CBR that we mostly disagreed with. Um, and that previous one was... D&D pre-written campaigns that you should avoid as a first-time player. If you remember that one. Uh, now this one is D&D pre-written campaigns that are perfect for first-time players. D&D pre-written campaigns that are perfect for first-time players. Number eight, Lost Minds of Fendelver is the starter adventure. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. I mean, I don't know if it's a campaign or just an adventure, but Lost Minds is perfect. I mean... Uh, pound for pound, it's considered one of, if not the best 5e adventure still going on 20, you know, five years almost. 214, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 22, 22, that means eight years of D&D 5e. Lost Minds is still considered one of the best. So yeah, I don't know why it's rates number eight. I'd put it at number one, but okay. I'm interesting to see what their number one is. Number two, the Wild by the Wild Beyond the Witchlight is low combat. Uh, the Wild Beyond the Witchlight again, not a campaign. It's an adventure. Is Wild Beyond the Witchlight perfect for new players who have never played before? I don't know. On paper, it is, but actually. The way it's written for, I mean, you remember, I never read it. Um, it feels like it's a little bit more advanced, especially with dealing with politics and multiple dimensions and pixies and alternate racial rules and alternate magic rules. I don't know if this is a good adventure for beginning players. So I'm going to disagree on that one. Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden is challenging but rewarding. Okay, again, an adventure. Not really a campaign. This is Icewind Dale, Rhyme with the Frost Maiden is sort of the forgotten 5e product, right? I mean, when was the last time you heard it come up in a conversation? It's like everything that came out after Ravenloft is just sort of vanished up until, you know, Witchlight. And Witchlight's kind of vanished. And then so really Strixhaven. It feels like nobody really talks about Icewind Dale. Probably because Icewind Dale promised a lot, but didn't follow through. Would Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden be challenging for beginning players? Yes, it features a lot of things like resource management, you know, food, uh, survival, politics. Again, I don't know if that's a good starter for beginning players. Remember, this is beginning players who have never played before. And, you know, maybe have some general basic idea of DMD, but really haven't really played 5e. So, yeah, I wouldn't put Rhyme of the Frost Maiden on the list. But it's weird that it do never hear about it. It just sort of disappeared. Uh, number four, uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist is a low-level rumps. Yes, I would say uh, Dragon Heist is perfect for beginning players. It's mostly just running around a city, interacting with NPCs, learning how the world works, getting a taste of the politics and the big bads. You know, it's slightly goofy. It's, uh, you know, there's plenty of places to stop and take a breather and just, you know, uh, it gives you a great tour of sort of, you know, water deep, but not really. Yeah, it's definitely, I think, a good starter. So I definitely agree with that one. Number four, Storm's Green Things. Storm King's Thunder has a good sense of scale. Mind you, here's where we go. Where my, when you did the adventures players should avoid, you listed Storm King Thunder as one of the adventures players should first time players should avoid. Now you're saying Storm King's Thunder is one that first time players should play, and I totally agree. I will always go to Storm King's Thunder. I mean, I consider it, you know, it's in my top two of 5e adventures. Uh, well, top three because of mine's, but we know how much I, 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 you know, Storm King's Thunder is an homage to Against the Giants. It's a perfect low starting campaign, you know, places you in a series of relatively easy to understand classic type encounters. Oh, the monsters are attacking. Go defend us. And then slowly ramps up the, oh, where there's actually, you know, 
things we need to worry about. So yeah, I agree with that one. Number three, Ghosts of Saltmarsh is an anthology that works as a campaign. Again, you're the exact same people who said that Ghost of Saltmarsh is a not a good starter because it's not interconnected. Except, of course, yeah, it is. Uh, Ghost of Saltmarsh is an interconnected anthology based upon a series of adventures that could work as a campaign with very little um, actual work on your part. One or two things. Uh, it's, you know, it's got a bunch of largely underrelated adventures, except they all sort of deal with, you know, the same basic theme. So yeah, it could work as a campaign. Uh, it definitely has a good starting. You get a city, you get a haunted house. Who doesn't love a haunted house? Uh, you get, you know, pirates. Who doesn't love pirates? And undersea stuff. And yeah, I mean, it is very specific to a, a very specific setting. And some people might be like, I don't want to play a water-based campaign. Uh, still, I think it's a good starter. I, I would agree. Keep it on the list. Uh, number two, Strixhaven Kirklings of Chaos starts as players as a freshman. Again, Strixhaven is not a campaign. It is not a rule book. It is not a life guide. It's an adventure. Uh, and really, um, I don't, I would say if you're going to run Strixhaven, run it, but it's not, don't run it as a D&D game. Just sort of run it as its own thing. It just really doesn't fit in anywhere with D&D. I mean, you, it, there's just too many arcanist arc you know um nods to sort of the, today you know you got the, the coffee shop thing and you know it's a school and it's really more of a hogwarts D, &D tries to do hogwarts game than really a D, &D game so uh, for beginners no i would i would definitely not and this has nothing to do with my personal opinion of strict saving because i think strict has saving is way more overblown and really is just, you know, kind of more of a joke. Uh, it should be ignored. Yeah, I would not put Strixhaven on the list. And number one is Dragons of Ice Spire Peak is for newcomers. Dragons of Ice Spire Peak is the sequel to Mines. <laughs> Literally, it is the sequel to Lost Mines of Pendelaver. So really, I would run Lost Mines of Fendelver, and then if they survive all the encounters, they should be at the point where they can go do Dragons of Ice Spire Keep. So really... The only problem I have with this list is Lost Minds should be at number one. Really. I mean, it is probably the best for beginners. It's literally written for beginners. It talks you through every step. There's very few other fi official 5e products that even come close. I mean, you know, uh, and I'm not a 5e guy. And even I know that this is uh, one of the best, if not the best, consistently considered. Lost Minds is just consistently considered the best. I mean, there's very few other 5e products that even come close for just purely good introduction, purely good stand the test of time. You could take it out of the box, run it right now, no question. So yeah, I don't see why it's not number one. My, uh, number one would be my, on my list would be Lost Minds. Number two on my list would be Dragon Heist. Number three would be Storm King's Thunder. Number four, I'd do go, go, Salt Marsh, I'd put on there, but it wouldn't be a top one. I'd ignore Icewind Dale. I'd ignore Witchlight. I'd definitely ignore Strixhaven for starters. Uh, I'd ignore, as yeah, much as I love it, I don't know if Tomb of Annihilation is good for a starter campaign because it's too dependent on the lore. You know, definitely wouldn't throw them into Ravenloft first off. But yeah, uh, number one should be uh, Lost Minds. I, I, I don't know why it's not. Uh, have these people played Lost Minds? Really? Anyways, uh, that's uh, another list from CBR. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is this newsworthy? What would be your number one adventure to run for newcomers? Uh, and of course, this doesn't count stuff like Adventures League stuff. And there's a lot of stuff that Adventures League has put out that is official canon 5e product that isn't on this list at all. But yeah, Lost Minds, number one. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. If you're feeling generous, please support me. Help me reach 1,000 subs by August 4th. And we'll do something crazy like, I don't know, buy a house or learn how to drive or shave my head or eat a taco. See ya!